Me too. Come with me tonight to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I want to commence reading at verse number 37. I'm going to fill the following verses. Mark chapter 4, commencing at verse number 37. There you will find these words. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Thank you. You may be seated. Look to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor tonight, you're in it now. There are some times you look around your life, you survey and see that you've tried your best to do it the right and righteous way. You've been obedient to the orders and ordinances of God. You've tried to be committed to the commands that Christ has given you. And still, when you look around at your present location, you wonder how in the world did I get here? Even in the midst of trying to do it the right way, even in the midst of trying to do it according to Scripture, there are times you still look at your scene, your situation, and your scenario, and you try to figure out how in the world did I get here? You tried to raise your family the right way. You tried to show them the love and fear and ammunition, admiration of the Lord. You tried your best to show them how they should love and forgive one another, how close-knit that they should be. You tried to show them that because God has divinely designed it, that their DNA connected, that regardless what the devil may do, that DNA and divineness ought to be able to beat whatever the devil is trying to cause discourse within the family. But look like when you look around at the family table, and even if they're even sitting at the table, they're not talking to one another. You sit there and wonder how in the world did I get here? You tried your best to make your marriage work. You tried your best to make your marriage better. You tried your best to hold it together. You tried your best to do your part. You're the one that's always letting it go. You're the one that's always looking over it. You're the one that's always leaving it alone. You're the one that's always not saying anything just for the sake of keeping everything together. But look like the more and more you try to hold it together, the more and more your spouse is determined to tear it apart and some night when you're sitting there all alone wondering where your comrade and confidant and companion may be you begin to question yourself how in the world did I get here because it would be different if I got here being disobedient it would be different if I got here being sinful and satanic it would be different if I got here following my own direction it would be different if I got here if I listened to me more than I did the master it would be different if I got here if I laid my own plan out and gave myself my own flu blueprint and was following my own design but the truth be told I got here following God I got to have somebody that ought to be able to testify with me that sometime even following God can lead you in the fatalities that sometime even following God can put you in the midst of trouble 
trouble, trials, and tribulation. But here's the good news, that if I followed God in it, then God has the responsibility of getting me through it. In this text, we find some disciples that were not on the boat on their own. They were not on their own navigational course. They did not set their own destination. If you back up in chapter 4, Jesus one that told them, let us go to the other side. They were following God, doing what God told them to do, and still ran into a storm. How do you deal with it? When I'm being obedient and instead of getting opportunities, I run into obstacles. How do I deal with it? When I'm trying my best to do it God's way, but it looked like the devil is in the way, but everything I see got God fingerprints on it. How do I deal with it? When I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but yet I find myself in a storm. Tell your neighbor you're in a storm now. No reason for you to try to worry, no reason for you to throw in the towel, no reason for you to try to jump overboard, no reason for you to get mad at anybody, you're in it now. No reason for you to go turn in your resignation in the morning, no reason for you can tell them what they can do with their job, no reason for you to try to fight somebody when you clock in, you in it now. No reason for you to pack your mom back your bags, try to go back to your mama's house, no reason for you to try to fight your way through it. No reason to think you can out fuss them, out argue with them. You're in it now. No reason for you to think you can drop them off at the fire department. You can leave them at the steps of the hospital. You ain't got to raise them. Just turn them in over to CPS. No reason for you to try to walk away from it. You're in it now. And the truth be told, when God get me in it, he's already prepared, equipped, qualified, and composed me to handle whatever stuff I'm going through. They're in the boat. On the sea. In a storm. Following the Savior. Let me say that again. They're in the ship. On the sea. In a storm. Following the Savior. And the problem is, Pastor Radon, the Savior that sent me is sleeping. Which means that my storm is active, but my Savior is not. The storm's moving, but God ain't moving. My Savior that sent me is sleeping. Come on and be honest with me. You can get off your holy high horse. You can ride it on the way home. But come on and be real with me. If the truth really be told, sometime you can look around your life uh, and try to seek the Savior that sent you and look like he's sleeping. Sometimes you can look around your life and wonder not just how in the world that I get here, but what in the world is God doing because I am here. Sometimes you try to figure out why would he send me and then and go to sleep on me. There's three, three things I find about this storm and I'm, and I'm headed somewhere else. First of all, I find the components of the storm. The text says that it was two components, wind and water. Here's the thing, Dr. Johnson, that the reason why the storm happened was because of the geographical location of the Sea of Galilee and because of its low elevation and it was situated between mountainous areas. So the cold air and cold pressure that came off of the mountains 
when it hit the warm air and pressure of the low pressure that was covered over the Sea of Galilee, when they ran into each other, it instantly caused a storm. Which means, Aaron Chapman, that this storm wasn't personal, it was natural. You ain't catching me here. Sometimes you think the devil is picking on you. Sometimes sometime you think that the enemy is just after you. Sometimes you think you're the only one that's going through it. And if the truth be told, if you look at the components, what you're dealing with, it ain't personal, it's just natural. I'm talking to somebody in here right now. If the truth really be told, you have problem with your diabetes. But yet, even though you have problem with your sugar level, you're like my mother used to say uh, that it ain't that you're after the desserts, the desserts are after you uh, and because they won't leave you alone, you already have a high level of sugar and now you eating something you got no business doing and you get sicker that ain't personal, that's natural if the truth really be told you got somebody that don't know how to quit talking, you got somebody on this side that love being talked about because they're always out there doing something Something. And when you put the two together, you can't help but to get a liar. Some stuff ain't personal, it's just natural. Some stuff ain't about you, it just happened naturally. How do I how do I know it's how do I know it's natural? It's natural because the text don't say. It was the first storm. Neither does it say it was the last storm. It was a storm, which meant one has came before and one came after this one. Tell your neighbor, you ain't the first and you're not the last. Some stuff just natural. You ain't you ain't the first one to ever get cancer. You ain't the last one that's gonna have it. You ain't the first one that ever had heart trouble. You ain't the last one that's ever gonna have it. You ain't the first one that bills got behind and you're not gonna be the last one. You ain't the first one that ever got lied on and you're not gonna be the last one. You ain't the first one that had to cry at night and you're not gonna be the last one. This stuff is not personal. Some trouble is just natural in this world you gonna have to suffer through trial and tribulation man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble some stuff just natural it's, it's, it's natural but let me be honest with you in the text it's natural, but it's nasty. It wasn't just a stone. It wasn't just another stone. Mark says it was a great stone, which means it was natural, but it was nasty. Come on and be honest with me. You got some stuff in your life right now. It's just nasty. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's not the usual hard. It's, it's rough, but it ain't the usual rough. It's, it's enemies, but it ain't the usual kind of enemies. It's burdens, but it ain't the usual kind of burdens. It's, it, it's natural, but it's nasty. It's, uh, it's so nasty that instead of just making the water move, it made the water beat up the ship. And the water that's supposed to be helping it sail is now the water that's causing it to sink. I'm talking to somebody in here that got to be able to testify. You got some stuff in your life that should be supporting you but it's really sinking you. You got some stuff in your life that because it's beating on you, it's causing to get the best of you. But here's the shout of the text, my brothers and sisters. The text says it was beating on the ship. But the disciples should have had sense enough to know that the waves can beat me but it can't beat me. Let me say it one more time. The disciples should have had sense enough to know that the waves can beat me but it can't beat me. I'm talking to somebody besides me in here tonight that ought to understand that whatever your storm may be doing
it to you. It can beat you, but it's not going to beat you. Tell your neighbor, it ain't going to beat me. The sickness ain't going to beat you. The trouble ain't going to beat you. The rumor ain't going to beat you. The heartache ain't going to beat you. The enemy ain't going to beat you. The lies ain't going to beat me. It's going to beat me, but it ain't going to beat me. It's natural. It's natural. It's nasty. But, but it was also unpredictable. They did not. They did not have the meteorological technology or information that we have that can tell us in advance when a storm is coming. Only thing they know, if they were sailing on the Sea of Galilee, and it hit me. You ain't catching me here. Some stuff in your life you were looking for. But some stuff that hit you, you wasn't predicting. I'm talking to somebody. Some stuff in your life you saw coming. But some stuff you didn't know it was there till it hit you. Some sickness you knew you had in your body. But when you went to go get your checkup, you wasn't expecting him to say you had that sickness. Then it hit you. Some bill you expected to be overdue. But then when you got one email, you forgot all about that one. Then it hit you. Some people you expected to betray you. You expected to stab you in the back. You expected to to walk away from you, but some people that did it to you, they did it unpredictable. It just hits you. Even though, but here's the thing: it was, it was unpredictable to them, but it was expected by their Savior. He knew what was going to hit them before they got on the ship. He knew what was coming before they got on the sea. I just believe in my own personal theological philosophy that because he knew a storm was coming, that's why he got on the ship. You ain't catching me here. He could have met them on the other side. He could have showed up when they got to the other side. It was other little ships that was with her. He could have got on either one of them. But because he knew what his disciple was about to go through, he knew it was coming. So let me get on the ship with you. I'm talking to somebody. You ain't going through you by yourself. Maybe the Savior hadn't moved yet, but he on the ship with you. find the components of the storm, but then I find the composure in the storm. The disciples was in jeopardy according to Luke, which means they, they wrestled with the water and tried to, to get the water out. It looked like the more they tried to get out, the more it came in. Until they made the right response to their storm, let's go get Jesus. You ain't catching me yet. You ain't catching me. They tried to wrestle with the water. They, they tried to get the water out, but it kept getting in. And somebody finally thought about, let's go get Jesus. You ain't caught me yet. You ain't caught me yet. They, they, they tried to fix it themselves. They tried to deal with it themselves. But instead of trying to fix it and trying to deal with it, let's go get somebody that can handle it. You missed me just that quick. They tried to fix it themselves. They tried to deal with it themselves. But finally they realized, why am I going to fix it when I got somebody that can handle it? Why? Sooner or later, you need to figure out that some stuff you can't, can't fix, some stuff you can't deal with. And instead of dealing with it, why don't you go get the one that can handle it? And the reason I know he can handle it, because I know he can handle the storm, because he handled me.
Maybe, maybe, maybe not y'all. Maybe, maybe y'all were better than I was. Maybe y'all came in a little quicker, didn't do as much, but I can't say that. I ain't like my nephew. I know how to play spade. Pretty good at it. I know how to play be it with. Pretty good at it. I had my share of old friends like Jack Daniel and Jim Bean and, and Morgan Davis before the Lord finally pulled me in. And the reason I don't worry about storms now, the reason why I don't worry about how great they are, the reason why I don't worry about how big they are, I know Jesus can handle my storm because he already proved it by handling me. And if he can handle me, In order for Jesus to handle the storm, Jesus stayed asleep so they could figure out, it, in order for them to get their storm handled, they need to disconnect with their disaster and go and connect with their Christ. Now, let me say it again. It, it, he had to teach them that in the midst of a storm, you got to disconnect from your disaster and go and connect with your Christ. The storm was still going on, but they went and got Jesus. The wind was still blowing. The wave was still beating up the ship, but they let go of the storm and they went and got Jesus. Tell somebody, just let it go. Quit fighting with it. Quit wrestling with it. Quit toiling with it. Quit arguing with it. Quit fussing with it. Quit worrying about it. And just let it go and go and get Jesus. when you get back. But when you come back, you're coming back with Jesus. I got to skip some of this. I got I got to skip some of this. He, 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 they, 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 they made the right response. But, but, but then I got to give them another prop before I tell you the problem, they had the right response, but, but then in their composure, they, they also had the right resilience. Wind was blowing. Waves beating against the ship. They went and got Jesus. But one thing I can give them, nowhere in the text does one of them ever say, let's go back to the shore. You miss me. You miss me. You miss me. Wind blowing. Waves beating against the ship. They went and got Jesus. But nobody said, let's go back to the shore. They made up in their mind, either we're going to proceed or we're going to perish. But we ain't going back. Because here's the thing. Verse 36 said that they sent away the multitude. And it's hard to go back to something when you've already gave the benediction to it. It's hard to go back to something when you've already finished the chapter. I'm talking to somebody right now. Your mind is on going back to where you came from. Your mind is saying, maybe I ought to go back again. But let me help you out. You got to have something. I'm resilient. Either I'm going to proceed or I'm going to perish. Either I'm going to make it or I'm going to die trying to get there. But I refuse to go back. That resilience thing. That right response. But I do got some bad news. And their composure. They had the right response. But, but they had the wrong reaction. They woke up Jesus. And instead of telling Jesus to handle the storm, instead of asking Jesus to handle the storm, they said the wrong question. Carest thou not that we perish? So, sometimes, sometime, my brothers and sisters, you're missing the text. They had the right manners. They, they, they woke him up. 
but, but then they, they had the wrong message. And they said, carries thou not that we perish. Can I help somebody? Some stuff that mess you up in your storm, it ain't your manners, it's your mouth. That's why scripture tells you to sprinkle of those things as though they were. Which means if I'm going to live faith, I got to speak faith. Which means if I'm going to talk Jesus, uh, I got to walk Jesus. Right? Which means if I'm going to be a child of God, I need to talk like a child of God. Quit saying you ain't going to make it. Quit saying you don't know if you're going to get well. Quit saying that you don't know if you're going to pay the bill. Quit saying I don't know how this is going to work out. But because I got Jesus with me, I know if the Lord said I'm going to work it out, then he's going to work it out. your neighbor watch your mouth when you, go, when you go home tonight and you ask God to handle what's going on in your family when they try to press your buttons tonight watch your mouth when you when you go to work in the morning and you ask God tonight to handle some crooked cantankerous conniving co-workers and they try their best to make you lay down all the religion that you just picked up tonight you ain't got to respond to them. You just watch your mouth. You just, when you go back to family dinner and the same crazy cousin or silly sister or braggadocious brother is still hating on you for what you got and you really ain't got nothing, you ain't got to fuss with them. Just watch your mouth. When you come back to ministry meeting and the one that want to do the most talking on what the church ain't doing or the main one that ain't doing nothing they own self for the church, you ain't got to fuss back with them. Just watch your mouth. Sometimes your mouth exposes your weakness. He said they had no faith. And the only reason he knew they didn't have no faith is because what they said to the Savior. You're missing the time. I got to sit down. It ain't what they said to the enemy. What exposed their weakness is what they said to the Savior. My question to you is, is not what you say to the people that's giving you trouble, but how do you approach the God that you need to handle the people that's giving you trouble? Sometimes it ain't what you say to them. Sometimes what exposes your weakness is what you say to him. I, I got to stop. There's the components of the stone. The composure of the stone. But then lastly, most importantly, the control of the stone. He stepped out on the hem of the ship. He didn't touch it. He, he didn't lay his hands on it. He just said, peace be still. If you ever been around wind, you know wind makes a lot of noise. Makes a lot of howl. But it didn't say he cried with a loud voice. It just said he said. He spoke normally. And even with all the noise the wind was making, it heard his voice. Being from Miami, I know you've been on water. And you know when waves of water hit something, it makes noise. It makes a lot of racket. And even though the water was making a lot of racket and commotion. It hurt his voice. Truth be told, everybody and everything in the text heard his voice except his disciples. Because everybody was doing what he was supposed to be doing except the disciples. 
The wind was created to blow. It was blowing. The waters created to wave. It was waving. The ship was designed ever since Noah's Ark to float. It was floating. The disciples were supposed to be designed to believe and they were doubting. They were the only thing in the text that wasn't following his voice. You ain't catching me in here. My thing to you is, is everything in your life doing what it's supposed to be doing except you. <laughs> it, it, you sickness is supposed to make you sick. B bills are supposed to make you pay money. Lies are supposed to be untruth. Uh, enemies are supposed to attack. Uh, Ditch diggers are supposed to dig. Backbiters are supposed to bite. Backstabbers are supposed to stab. You supposed to be praying, but you ain't. You supposed to be believing, but you ain't. You supposed to be praising, but you ain't. You supposed to be worshiping, but you ain't. Everything in your life is doing what it's supposed to be doing, except you. Just, just. It just heard his voice. Heard his voice. Reason, reason why they stopped. Reason why it, it stood at attention. Reason why it, it settled down was because, Dr. Johnson, this ain't the first time that the wind and water heard his voice. They stopped because they knew what his voice sounded like. It was his voice in Genesis chapter 1 that spoke to water. And water went east and made the Atlantic, went west and made the Pacific, went north and made the Gulf of Mexico, went south and made the Gulf of Mexico, went north and made the five great lakes. And what was left got together and made a Mississippi River. It's heard his like voice uh, before. It was his voice uh, that made the wind blow into the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul. It was his voice uh, that was there at the Red Sea that spoke to the wind, made it blow all night long and told the water to get out of the children of Israel way and make sure you dry yourself up while you're moving so they can get across on dry ground. They know what his voice sound like. It was his voice at Nora that when they put and dipped a, a tree in the water that the bitter water turned sweet. They know what his voice sound like. It was his voice that talked to the four winds of the earth in a valley full of dry bone with Ezekiel and made them come back to life. They know what his voice sound like. Tell your neighbor I I know his voice. I'm in it. I know I'm going to get out of it. My sign and signal that I'm getting out of it is when I hear his voice. I got to stop. There's a story I'm reminded of as I go to my seat. There was, there was this man and his wife was pregnant with a little girl. And the woman went into labor. It was a very hard labor. And unfortunately, the mother died. But because of the hardness and the severity of the labor, the little girl came out blind. He named the, the little girl after her mother, Becky. They lived in an apartment complex on the top floor. The father did everything he could at least to teach the girl how to manage and, mon and maintain her life by herself. So he taught her how to do things by just listening to his voice. He taught her how to get around the house by, by his voice. He taught her how to, to get in the apartment complex and either get on the elevator or go up the stairs by listening to his voice. When she was around 10 years old, the father had left her at the house to run and go get some things. And while he was gone, unfortunately, a fire broke out 
in the apartment complex. And firemen got there. They started getting everybody out as fast as they could. But then, but then, fine, hold on, brother. But then, finally, they realized that Becky was up on the top floor. But by the time uh, they tried to get to Becky, uh, the fire uh, was too great. And because uh, they were on top of uh, the top floor, they could not get the rescue uh, ladder high enough uh, to get up. So they had to break out uh, the life mat. Uh, Becky uh, came to the window. Uh, the fire department chief uh, began to explain to her uh, who he uh, was uh, and asked Becky uh, to jump out of uh, the window uh, and land uh, on the life mat. Uh, and he said, uh, Becky, Jump. But Becky uh, would not jump out of uh, the window. Ain't the Lord all right? And the police chief uh, then uh, grabbed the bullhorn uh, and then said, who he uh, was uh, and then said uh, Becky uh, uh, jump uh, but then Becky uh, would not jump out of uh, the window uh, ain't the Lord uh, alright uh, a neighbor uh, grabbed the bullhorn uh, and yelled out uh, who she was and said Becky uh, jump by that time uh, the fire had consumed the apartment and she's declared uh, that she might not make it but by that time uh, the daddy had made it there made his way uh, through the crowd uh, grabbed the bullhorn uh, didn't say who he was uh, he just hollered out uh, Becky uh, jump uh, ain't the Lord all right uh, immediately uh, he, he jumped out the window uh, and landed on the life mat uh, ain't he all right uh, a few people were talking uh, that observed the scene uh, and said why is it uh, that she would not respond to the fire chief why is it that she would not respond to the police chief why is it that she wouldn't respond to her neighbor but as soon as her daddy got there she immediately jumped one of them finally said it's because she didn't know the voice of the fireman she didn't know the voice of the policeman she didn't know the voice of the neighbor but Becky knew her father's voice ain't the Lord alright I'm gone now children through with y'all tonight but that's how I know that you're gonna make it that's how I know that you're going to survive. That's how I know that you're going to handle your store. Simply because you got a savior and you know his voice. Ain't the Lord all right? How do I know it? But simply because before I knew his voice, he knew mine. He knew my voice one Friday morning. When they put a cross up on his shoulder, they marched him up. 
up Calvary Mountain. I got to quit here. Good evening, y'all. God bless your heart. Got to leave you now. But before I go, I got one more thing. I got to tell you, he handled the storm when they nailed his hand, riveted his feet, hung him high, stretched him wide. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder. Y'all know what he did, don't you? He died. Leave him alone. Anybody know he died? They laid him down in a bar or two. But thank God for Jesus. He didn't stay dead. But early, I said early, y'all. Early, early, early. Sunday morning, got out the gray, heard him saying, I got all power, all power, all power, all power. <laughs> Ain't he all right, y'all? I say, ain't he all right? Is it anybody here that's heard his voice and you believe whatever the storm, he can handle it? You ought to tell three people he can handle it. He can, he can. He can, he can. He can, he can. Ooh. 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 